Hey, what's up, everybody out there in Loudwire land? This is Sally Erna from Godsmack. I'm very pleased to turn on to you our latest and newest and possibly our last full body of work, our album called Lighting Up the Sky that will be out on February 24th. We hope you all enjoy it. And these are my favorite records. On February 7th of 1981, I turned 13 years old. I had been taking drum lessons for about 11 years, and even my drum instructor had told me and encouraged me at that point to go out and start listening to my favorite kind of music because he felt that I could hear music and play it quicker and better than when I was reading sheet music. Aerosmith Rocks was the first record I ever purchased. All the songs are my favorite. If I could gravitate towards one, it would probably be uh, Last Child. The words were very connected to me and my lifestyle being raised on the streets, and it's all about being a punk in the streets. It just has a very unique sound that I, I've never really heard anyone replicate till this day. As time went on, I started transitioning from my Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath era, probably into the Judas Priest, Iron Maiden era. And that was pretty popular when I was right around the age of 14. The Judas Priest album that I first heard was Unleashed in the East. And I just remember the first time I heard Victim of Changes, I was at my friend Sean's house and he put it on vinyl and he had these big giant, great big giant Pioneer speakers and this huge stereo system that his brother owned. And I mean, he turned this thing up and it floored me. It literally put me back in my chair. And I, I just will never forget that time or that song for that reason. Maybe the most powerful and loudest song I've ever heard in my life. So then I turned about 15 years old and I started to discover some more complex music, especially bands like Rush. So it started with moving pictures because when I heard Tom Sawyer, especially that huge drum fill in the middle off the moving pictures record, I mean, that changed the game for me. And at that point, I literally sat home, skipped school almost every day, strapped on headphones, and I studied Neil Peart and the Rush albums from top to bottom. And then I went on to really study Exit Stage Left, which is their double live album. And I remember that I got to the point of learning Xanadu in the trees, and in the middle of the song, he starts using wood blocks and I didn't have wood blocks. So that was the day that I got my ass out of my room and I went to school to simply go to the music room and steal the wood blocks and go back home. <laughs> and uh, to this day, I'm really not sure why any teacher or student wouldn't have stopped a 15 year old kid walking down the hallway with a hood on and a big thing wrapped in a blanket going down the hallway. You know, it looks a little suspicious, but it wasn't a, a shotgun or anything, it was it was just simply wood blocks and I needed them and that's how I got them. At 16 years old, let's see, 68, 78, that would be 1984, uh, a really good friend of mine who I was also in a band with at the time, he was the guitar player named John Mashera. He came over my house one day with a couple of albums. Now this dude was always way ahead of his time. I mean, he had leather jackets and long black hair covering his face way before in ripped jeans and all that stuff over his knees way before it even became a popular thing he said man i gotta play this band that i discovered and he put on fight fire with fire by metallica on the ride the lightning album you know at that time you have to remember i was really into like hard rock blues and starting to get into more prog rock like rush and this beast of a song came on with the fastest double bass drums i've ever heard and I just remember thinking, this is fucking horrible. I don't even know what I'm listening to. It's just madness going on. I just remember sitting there with my jaw open because I didn't even know how, I didn't even know how to describe it or how to express how I felt. It was just, it was just vicious and relentless and unforgiving. And sure as hell, you know, a couple weeks later, I listened to it and listened to it and, and I fell in love with it. And to this day, Metallica, you know, obviously had become one of my favorite bands and probably my top favorite metal band in the world. Right around 17 years old, I really started to develop my skills a lot more and I was playing a lot more in bands. I was really drifting into more of a punk rock era and I was discovering the Misfits and GBH and Dead Kennedys, Sex Pistols, never mind the Bollocks. I mean, that was by far and still probably my top favorite punk album of all time. Being raised in one of the most violent cities in America, uh, I always had a, an aggression inside of me and, and 
that kind of music really helped me release a lot of that because I felt like it was a fist fight. When you listen to punk rock, it's like a total fist fight. 18 years old came around and <laughs> And then I kind of got sucked into the glam world because I was out on the road at that point. It was my first journey out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. My mom relocated us because I was getting into a lot of trouble. And she took us to North Carolina where she had a job opportunity. That's when I started to uh, get into bands that were actually playing on the road in a circuit, but they were doing covers and that's how we got paid. We got paid you know, $50 a night and a case of beer, or sometimes we wouldn't get paid at all. We were just trying to get exposure. Um, and unfortunately, mm, I have to say it unfortunately, because I really didn't love being in those kind of bands, but that's when I really started to get turned on to a lot more kind of glam bands. And I was sucked into that world because of the set list we had to create. Back then it was spandex and leg warmers and makeup and tease your hair and oh my God. I look back at some of those photos and I think to myself, what the fuck, was anybody looking out for me at that point and telling me what I looked like? But it was fun, you know, the memories are fun to think about those times. But as far as hair band goes, I'd have to probably go with Shout of the Devil by Motley Crue. I mean, that was just a really cool, it was a cool record for a kid to, to experience. How they looked, what they sounded like, who I thought they were cool because they were more street vibey and and uh, had an edge to them. And again, I've always related to that because of growing up in such a, tough city um, that's who we were as kids and the videos that they put out and how they portrayed themselves it was just it was rough and it was tough and it was um you know i thought it was pretty cool so at the age of 19 i finally found a band that i was touring with it was actually a band called lex luthor and to this day me and the bass player are still really good friends todd jackson john bonham i felt gave me good good tempo really good right foot but Neil gave me really great hands. And when I put those two together, I found that I was really eligible and desired for some bands that were looking for strong technical drummers that could hit hard, but play very intricately. That's when I really started to kind of hone in on my craft. And I was listening to Rain and Blood by Slayer. I was listening to Peace Cells by Megadeth, The Dark by Metal Church, um, Merciful Fate, and I remember, you know, 19, even into my early 20s, like that's what we were really focused on. We were playing our set lists were, you know, Rain and Blood and Angel of Death and Creeping Death and Wake Up Dead by Megadeth and even mixing in some cool punk rock stuff by GBH like Slut and Bodies by the Sex Pistols. So that was, that was really, when I think about it, it's some of my favorite times being a musician. You know, we were playing the club circuit and we were playing music that we really loved. 